Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another beautiful event here at the Life School, a conference of visionary leaders that are driving legacy, they're creating impact, but they also are aligning the purpose with profit, and they're doing more good in the world overall. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much to all our amazing speakers today for their time and amazing wisdom that they will share around the main way that they actually serve the world, the main way, the main problem that they actually solve for others the way that they uniquely solve it. And also I'm gonna get into behind their purpose of why it's important to them to be able to solve this problem. Um, so before we, I invite one of my first speakers on to our stage today, um, I'd love to remind you that this event was brought to you by the Life School, where we help purpose-driven leaders build a legacy company that does good in the world through the operations and branding, marketing, sales, systems, and team. Um, and our vision here is to empower purpose-driven entrepreneurs and business leaders to use their life's purpose through legacy entrepreneurship. Our mission is to become the most impactful global community in purposeful entrepreneurship. And then lastly, our values here are community connection, service, and contribution. So again, thank you so much for joining us. This will be a jam-packed information session, so to speak. And again, I thank ahead my speakers ahead of time because I really value people's experience. And experience is one of those things that, that we're able to also help others with. So without further ado, I would like to say hi to Orly Zewi, a fellow connection from one of our platforms that we're both part of. Um, Orly, thank you so much for coming on. And I would love for you to say hi to everybody, kind of introduce yourself, where is it that you are based out of, and then the unique problem that you feel compelled to solve for others, your unique way in solving it, and the purpose behind why you think this is an important problem for you to solve. So welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me, uh, Alona. It's uh, it's nice to be part of this group. I uh, So my name is Orly Zewi, and i um, I'm the brand whisperer. I like to say I have really one superpower. I make fuzzy clear. And uh, I'm based out of Philadelphia. And what I do is I help founders and solopreneurs clarify and communicate their zone of genius so they can attract more of their ideal clients and grow their business. Um, I'm also an author and I'm at currently working on my second book. My first book, Ready Launch Brand, came out in uh, in May of 2023, or 2021, sorry, and um, and uh, was the number one new business book release on Amazon. And my second book, which is called uh, tentatively titled um, Why Not Me? The Female Guide for Entrepreneurship. And that book will be out in the first part of 2025. Um, trying to remember what else you were asking me. I kind of lost track of the questions. <laughs> uh, have I, I asked that only. questions? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, thank you for your introduction because obviously that's the way that we can better get to know you and also your unique methodology. So I, I want to ask you, each of you, to kind of share some of the education piece that maybe you repeat with your clients or your communities that you really feel that someone that doesn't know you know, around the problem and the solution that you're able to offer, what are some of the most important fundamentals that they need to know? So what, what is it that you could share around your unique methodology? So there's, you know, there's really three things. I mean, this is all about brand building and it's uh, typically for young, young businesses and startups. And really it's, it's three, three parts, figure out who you are and get clear on your why, figure out who needs it. That's your ideal customer. And number three is communicated in a succinct and also unified way across all platforms so people can find you, they can buy you, and they can refer you. Hmm. All three important fundamentals to standing out and also attracting the people that we want to be able to serve. I love that. And what's behind the purpose behind the work that you do? What are some of the, why is it that this is important to you? How did you get here? Well, you know, it really, um, honestly, it's in my DNA. So my, I come on my mother's side, I come from a long line of educators. So I'm a lifelong educator also, which I didn't mention, but I've been, uh, been a teacher for a long time and a, a professor. Um, and then on my father's side, I come from a long line of entrepreneurs. So basically I do what I, what I, you know, was born to do. I educate and I work with startups. My father was was an entrepreneur and struggled a great deal in 
during his career. And, um, and so I kind of have made it my mission to help uh, founders because for me, it's both personal and professional because when I help a founder, I'm not only helping the founder succeed, but I'm helping their family. I love it. So for you, it's kind of built in, right? It's not like my story where I didn't know that there was this whole other world of entrepreneurship. I thought, you know, I, I would do the old modeling of like, you know, get a degree, go to school and climb the ladder of some sort of successful career. Um, so for you, it's, it's a different purpose behind the work you do. That's very fascinating. Orly, lastly, before I leave you, I'd like to get a, a secret or a tip that you only share with your clients that you haven't shared before. Obviously, with, while I respect your business model, what is it that you could share with us here that it's kind of one of the insider things that when you teach your clients that they pretty much get a lot of amazing results around what you just mentioned? Um, well, there are a lot of tips, but the one that comes to mind first, because I work in the B2B space, um, I, I look at their LinkedIn profile. And the first thing I say to them is this top, the top part of your profile, which I call the identity panel, really the, the brand identity panel, uh, needs to answer these three questions. It needs to help me understand what you do. It helps me understand who you do it for. And it helps me understand what I would get from it. And finally, how it will transform me so uh, and transform my life. So the tip that I give people is the first thing you want to look at is your headline and stay away from generic things like consultant, which is why I call myself a facilitator of light bulb moments. Um, there are lots and lots of consultants out there and it, that's a meaningless word. So I would, I would, uh, my tip would be find a word, find words that really help you cut through the noise and help people understand how you're different from other people who do something in your industry, something similar in your industry. I love that. Thank you so much for that tip. I never thought of that before, right? But something that's going to resonate with people and also help you stand out because of, you know, I do over, sometimes when I overhear a certain word, we tend to tune it out, right? Even though obviously we like the people and all of that, but, you know, information overload. So I like that you kind of specified that for us as well. Thank you so much, Orly, for all the amazing service that you're out there. Um, you're really compelling in the world and helping people create that impact. And I will definitely come back to you at the end for a final message and other ways to further continue this conversation. Um, thank you. I'd love to go to Hepsi Garden. She's on my screen next. So Hepsi, thanks so much. And same, uh, same structure for all of us so that we keep our conversation focused, but also focused on the most important priorities, which I know is really important for us purpose-driven entrepreneurs to be able to be in service towards others. So welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So my name is Hepsi Godin. I am based in the UK and I support successful women to stop working like men. Um, I i um, very aware from personal experience and uh, observation that many women have made strides in their um, personal careers to reach a success that is deemed successful by other people's expectations and that we are pretty programmed in sort of like the male persona to do that because we entered a, a workplace that was designed for men and created by men so that we have adopted um, a way of working which is creating burnout and also increasing the gap between uh, current business and new businesses coming up because the next generation don't want to work like we worked. Wow, such an important problem for you to solve and something that I <laughs> definitely understand the value of uh, aligning, um, you know, our own authentic way of working as especially as women and all the gifts that we're given, uh, but also harmonize that with some of the other ways of doing business, such as execution and results and you know, uh, the drive behind some of the work that we do. So Hepsi, based on your own methodology and unique approach, what are some things that you could maybe share with us education-wise that might help us harmonize or align with who we truly are as women so that we do business our 
own way, but also leverage our talents and gifts to be able to even be more successful and more fulfilled in our own, you know, in our own, in our own unique way, um, despite what the messages growing up have been. Yeah, so my like one one of my main missions is to create awareness and curiosity into how people actually work. I think everyone is quite easily programmed and we just we just do the do. Um, I'm not suggesting that we all move across to the feminine side. I'm more about creating a bit of a yin and yang and understanding that being masculine so potentially being competitive is good in at certain times but if you are aware of that the being competitive or it, 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 acting as an individual is good at certain times but in other times maybe you need to collaborate so it's creating the awareness and the curiosity about across three sections I, I break business down in which is uh, people profit and planet and how and where you sit creating your own rhythm between masculine and feminine but coming all the way back from the beginning to the beginning in order to create better business and to be a better leader and to then live a better life it all comes back to your your why so my first step in creating and allowing someone to be more successful on their terms is getting them to understand the why why are they spending seven hours a day or however many days um hours a day at work the first answer will always be money but when you drive drive deeper down there it becomes a much more kind of fulfilling why and then and then it's about once what why are you working all these hours and what do you want to achieve it's not again it's not just about money money is the tool that will get you to where you want to be but so many of us are on a hamster wheel and aren't intentional I love it. Intentionality and, and being aware around certain behaviors that we are doing and how those align with our values and what we want to create in our life is definitely some, you know, easier said than done, right? For a lot of people. Oh, yeah. It's really people. difficult. Yeah. It's really yeah. difficult to move because especially with uh, one of the women that I work with, you've you've created success. So why why would what you're doing be wrong? Well, actually, um, you need you need to do something different to get to the next level um however the the way that you have created it always it feels safe so it's really easy to move back to to what you know so you have to kind of like be walk along the same path as the person so true we definitely have some story that's serving us and we keep holding on even though it, you know i'm looking at it at a macro level it's really hurting us so yeah for sure and that's why these things got to be dissected down to individuals and personalized support which i'm sure you also are able to provide hepsi how did you get into this work uh so i have worked in senior leadership went back to to work when I was three months old I was three months old my children were three months old uh, to prove that I could be a career woman and to be a mother uh, fortunately I was made redundant which in the UK means that my role was uh, no longer needed um, about two years later which led me to then work create my own business um, I worked in I've, I've continued to do that I, I have my own product business however as covid for many people was kind of like a game changer in my attitude i realized that i had capacity and wanted uh to learn why i was doing what i was doing and not necessarily reaching what i wanted to achieve so i then um reopened my brain and uh, allowed myself to re-educate myself into sort of like what why my habits and my behaviors were like like they were and 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 moved i love that so you walk the talk right because you've also gone through those transitory periods in your own life where you, i'm sure you've had to do some of the inner work that you help your clients with Thank yes so totally Thank you so much for sharing and the amazing service that you're also providing. I'll definitely come back to you at the end as well. Thank you. All right, I'd love to call on uh, Dr. Anna Katona next. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Uh, I realize I'm not looking at you all. 
Uh, I am a resilient leadership coach, and I help uh, businesses create safe, supportive, and successful learning environments uh, through listening to all stakeholders, whether it's employees, team members, or clients, to identify the most pressing needs uh, and develop a plan to address those needs, providing training and coaching. Uh, and the way I do that, the biggest problem that I solve is addressing, uh, helping businesses overcome the impact of workplace stress and trauma on employee performance and well-being. And these issues can really deeply affect an individual's ability to thrive uh, and creating barriers for success. And especially as entrepreneurs, because we tend to do everything. Uh, and so taking care of ourselves is critical. And uh, the framework I use is a, a, a framework called LEAD. So it's the leadership, education, assessment, and development. And so that leadership is identifying what are the skills, especially as female entrepreneurs, those adaptive leadership skills that we have that are really unique to us and how we can leverage those to create a, um, a safe and supportive learning or environment for uh, all members. And education is that continuous learning that uh, always looking at how do we make sure we're continually using those skills and growing those skills to, again, further not just our own individual skills, but that are creating a, a supportive work environment. Uh, the third one is assessment. So looking at evaluation, using tools to kind of follow along in the process and using those tools to kind of make decisions that are, again, help create a cohesive and organized environment that helps decrease a lot of stress and, and increase certainty as much as we can. And the final one is development, which is personal and professional growth for leaders and team members. And that uh, offering, I offer coaching and mentoring to develop kind of those adaptive leadership skills, which is also really around emotional intel intelligence and uh, strategic planning ability so that they could be more effective and efficient, work smarter, not harder. And uh, I help build resilient businesses where every team member feels safe, seen, and heard, ultimately leading to a healthier and more productive work environment. I love, I love the work you do, Dr. Ann, with not just individuals, but also teams, right? Because individuals in a collective, they're brought into a setting at work or, you know, whether it's a hybrid or um, a, uh, a live physical work environment, a lot of that can affect, you know, what most businesses want, right? Productivity, retention, uh, culture, all those important metrics for businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired for this question from your book. So shedding um, childhood trauma, is there maybe certain steps that you can share with us to help us maybe give us some awareness around some of the trauma that maybe we might find in personal, our personal life and also in our teams? that we can at least have that awareness and then maybe some potential solutions based on the work that you do that can, you know, at least get this process started for a lot of people. Yeah. I, one of the first pieces is being aware of where everyone is. And so looking at psychological safety, is it safe to take risks? Do they feel safe in making mistakes? Uh, and, and do we, again, as entrepreneurs, feel safe in doing that? Are we our own worst critics? And so really identifying what are those things that we, in the areas that may be the biggest barriers for us, uh, and then looking at what we can do. We may not immediately change how we feel about it, but giving, um, giving ourselves and giving our teams tools to help create that psychological safety that helps them to be able to, to know when things are coming. So that certainty when, um, you know, you, you can't fix everything, but the more you can put processes in place so that they know when they go to a meeting, we're going to start off a meeting with glows and grows. So what are three positives that happened and what is an area for growth? That That's kind of one specific example, uh, really putting small little things that are going to have a big impact. That first piece is awareness though, if we see team members complaining and coming in and really dejected, that glows and grows is kind of a really great way to switch their mindset pretty quickly and get them moving in a more focused direction 
uh, on one area for growth rather than trying to change everything because it's easy to get overwhelmed. So I think that's one of the first things. Yeah, and I love how also it's repeating, right? Awareness is where everything begins. Understanding, you know, what are some of those things and how they're impacting us and then going to the problem and to the solution piece because most, you know, human brain is always going to go to the solution first, but taking a few step back, steps back is really important to be able to then first identify you know, what is the right solution uh, to a specific problem, whether again, we're encountering it individually or in teams as well. Um, Dr. Han, how did you get into this work? What's the purpose behind the work you do? Uh, well, you kind of mentioned my my book, uh, yeah, Shedding Lies, Living Beyond Childhood Trauma. I share my story of childhood trauma and how it impacted me. And there, there were other traumas and it, it impacted me in every single way possible, yet I was really good at hiding it. And so my early 30s, I kind of had some realizations and really wanted to dive in at healing my own trauma and got into special education and, and behavior analysis. And from that, I ended up realizing that teachers and another educator, by the way, um, teachers and the students and families all together that they may be they're often struggling. And so I really wanted to make sure that what I've learned, I can help them and empower um, the people in those environments. And, and again, really translated a lot of this to business because of my own experiences with trauma um, and adaptive leadership. And so uh, I wanted to take my mission for myself and really spread it out to the world. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Beautiful story. And uh, another repetition example that, you know, your purpose sends out of pain, right? Something that you've also encountered and overcame. And now you want to do that. Um, you don't want to be in service towards others. And it turns into your life's work and mission. So beautifully said. Thank you so much for the work you do as well. And thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. All right. My next speaker up is going to be Bridget Holm. Bridget, thanks so much for coming on. So nice to see you again. Hey, Alana, it's great to see you too. Thanks for inviting me. My pleasure. So Bridget, the same the same question for you as well, if you could share. Um, where are you based, first of all, and some of the, the mission behind the work you do? What is it that you do? Well, the truth is that there are so many of us entrepreneurs and the number one problem for most of us is that we don't take imperfect action in the right direction to sell brand market ourselves, stay in the right mindset, prospect and navigate social media effectively. So I created the one-stop shop for entrepreneurs and coaches to monetize to that six figure plus income through organic networking and creating consistent sales cycles. Because when I was launching as an entrepreneur, I was building the plane while I was flying it. You know, I just said yes to every opportunity in front of me. And I realized I had to be ready before I felt ready. So my name is Bridget Hom. I do business and life coaching, motivational speaking. Uh, my best-selling book, Stuck on Ready, it's available everywhere. And it just equips us as entrepreneurs to step into that imperfect action, to get massive results, to honor your roles and goals, like Hepsi said, because we all deserve that romance with life, but a partnership with our future successful selves, which comes from creating those empowered client interactions forever. Hmm. I love it. And uh, I think what's important, you know, besides all the things that you said there in the mission behind your work is the, the, um, the monetizing piece and aligning profit, because I find, especially for women, we're all women here happen to be in this room. <laughs> Uh, it's an important tool, right, for us to be able to reinvest, um, you know, um, impact more people, do all the amazing things, hire more people, right, get more people around our mission, vision, and values, which can create a bigger impact. So can you maybe share your own perspective and methodology or experience around networking and then the monetization piece of a lot of the actions that women are specifically doing in business day to day? which might not be, you know, giving them ROI on their time and also aligning the profit piece. What's your unique perspective on doing this organically, hard-driven, hard-to-hard, human connection? Because I think we, I mean, I love that, all of that. Um, so for people that maybe are looking for a better way to do business uh, in the world and monetizing their efforts, their time and money, do you have any tips or anything that you could share from your experience? 
I was watching a TikTok and Elon Musk's girlfriend, one of them, said Elon always does something well. And he says he he makes his no's honor his yes. And so what I learned through entrepreneurship, and that's why I help entrepreneurs and they, they hire me to help them throughout the hours of 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Because it's learning to be an authentic alignment, to honor all the roles that you get to play in life. I'm going to go ride the bike with my sons, you know, at 3 p.m. I, I get to do the service work that I enjoy, but I'm extremely intentional about giving people, entrepreneurs and coaches, the authority and power to do something, to do sales from serving others with solutions, but also empowering them to understand that the close gives them, gives your prospects the opportunity to have more and better. So it starts with the mindset strategies of the stuck on ready entrepreneur that I created that help people to get to the place where they feel like they met themselves for the first time, but they are fully equipped to know how to do sales, branding, marketing, and prospecting from a place of empowerment and authenticity. Mm -hmm. I love that. And without removing you from the spotlight, because I love this conversation is in your definition, how do you connect? How would you define all those different, I guess, let's call them business metrics, right? Your branding and marketing, your sales, and then, you know, being able to scale your business from there. How would you, how would you personally define all of those different metrics or pillars, let's call them? And how do all of those connect together? I'm so curious to hear your perspective and your unique way that you think about that. First off, setting your hours of operation helps you to create that authentic alignment for yourself. So have hours of operation because you're your own boss now. And then also what you specifically do during those hours of operation in order to monetize, to be more productive, proactive, and profitable is to focus on your mindset programming, then clients, then prospects, then prospecting, then networking and content creation. When you focus on those specific six components, then you are able to monetize your influence because you're extremely intentional with empowering people based on those six components. Mm. I love how you simply put that, right? Because I know as you get more seasoned into the stage of entrepreneurship, it's all about simplifying. Uh, because when you simplify, then you can duplicate and you create more impact for people. So simple, intentional, those are the most income producing activities from my what I hear from uh, you sharing as well. Uh, beautiful. Bridget, how did you get into this work? What's the purpose behind the work you do? My background originally was ministry and journalism. <laughs> However, I got into this through desperation. Um, I had just gotten Zoom. I was on my way to getting Zoom divorced and moved out of my big, beautiful home and then had three boys at home. And my job in the seniors industry disappeared. So Bridge to Freedom Coaching was just a side hustle. I got a random Zoom business networking link and I showed up and I said, Bridget, I'm here, Bridge to Freedom Coaching. Are you ready to level up? And I had six clients within six weeks and then all my programs were born, motivational speaking, group sales trainings. And then I've had the opportunity to inspire thousands and get to that six figure plus income and help so many others to do the same. Wow, for you is fast right then and there, right? Because the dots were already there in your journey and they got connected for you right, really fast. And um, you're able to kind of focus on that full time and then create impact. Curious, what is Zoom divorcing? I never heard of that. <laughs> uh, well, I don't recommend divorce to anyone. However, it it was just, we got divorced on Zoom. Oh. I actually met my husband in Zoom Business Networking. If any of us are meeting, BridgetHom.me, I'll tell you the full story. Uh, but yes, I met my husband in Zoom Business Networking. It worked out well. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Thanks so much for clarifying that. Um, all right, Bridget. Thank you so much again for all the amazing service that you do out there, to, especially to, to women entrepreneurs, because I really do feel that uh, this is our time and we're all shining. We're all doing things. We're all um, have done, most of us have done some of the inner work to be able to now rise to our potential and be able to create more service and contribution towards others um, and be able to rise and, and step up. So yeah, beautiful work and thanks so much for sharing. All right, I'd love to say hi to Linda Gono. Gono? Did I, did I um, yes, pronounce yes, your yeah. last name correct, Linda? Yeah. Okay, beautiful, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Um, so my name is Linda Gunna. I am the CEO and founder of Linda's Events. I am a master certified events and wedding planner. 
we help clients celebrate their lives without no worries. I also serve on the board of NABO. It's the National Organization for Women Business Owners. Um, and uh, I started my business as a hobby um, and it turned into uh, a passion. And I realized a long time ago, things that most people struggle about having the event where the complaint, it came easy to me. Um, and uh, we all have had tried to put on an event and you start to get overlooked what to do, what's the kidder, what everything like that. But for me, especially for my wedding, every what every bride complained about, for me, it was the funnest time of my life. It was, I was sitting there like, why is people say this is so stressful? <laughs> so, and I realized that, you know, it was something that I really love. So I quit my job and I jump in fools on and I been doing it ever since. And it's, you know, I also, one thing that I said I did along my journey and I always encourage everyone to do with any business that you do is to always educate yourself on everything that you do. Um, you can have a skill to be, anybody can plan an event. Anybody can put on anything, but to truly be able to serve your clients, you have to know what their needs are. You have to know your business inside out. You have to know, because we are create as events planner, we are not just putting, we are putting on a, a somebody dream, something that they dream about all the life, whether it's a corporate event, whether it's something, a milestone celebration, they have an idea in their hair. So we have to take this blank canvas and actually bring it to the surface. So you have to truly know what it is to put on the event from how to service people, because it's a people business. You have to know how to deal with different people. Um, you have to know, be patient. You have to be understanding and you got to mean focus is that I think where most people miss is that it's not about us. It's always about the client because at times we may have an idea. I can, for me, my motto is that I can put on a beautiful event, but if that's not what my client wants, I fail. Then I lost everything. So you have to be able to listen. You have to be able to know the proper skills, set mindset. As I said, anybody can plan, but you have to know how to deal with the timeline. You have to know how to work with other vendors. You have to know all the moving pieces because during every event, there's 10,000 things that go wrong. You have to be able to pull out the fire and nobody know what's happening. So for me, it comes easy to me and what other people struggle. And I just, it's just always been something that I love to do. So, yeah, I love it, Linda. I think you touched upon a pretty important point, especially for us um, as humans overall in general, when we something comes easy to us, we disregard it and we're just like, well, everybody must kind of feel the same and everybody knows what we do, right? And knows what we, uh, and we don't value what is it that we actually uh, comes easier to us. So I think it's really important to pay attention to that because there's a lot of other people that that does not come easy to. And that actually would be my next question for you for a lot of ambitious people listening to us, kind of busy entrepreneurs and CEOs. What's the ROI of hiring an event planner, whether it's for their own personal wedding or maybe their events um, that they're putting together, hosting for their companies or all the types of events that you've seen in your experience? that you've hosted. What's the ROI? What are some like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, here's how we save you time, save you money, and obviously also uh, deliver the outcome of the event based on everybody's purpose. So why they're actually wanna host an event. I would say, you, you touched some of that is that we are your personal assistant in the, in the easy way to put it. And I think a lot of time people don't think about all the moving parts that come along with putting on events. Everybody thinks they can put on the events, but there's a lot of things that you have to know. You have to know what time the caterer need to show up. You have to know what the rules of the venues are. You have to, we are multitasker. We are taking care. If your event is a thousand people, you have to make sure to know every single detail at every moment, what is going on in that event. And sometimes people, you may, Sometimes I have clients that say, oh, well, I have this, I have this, and I have this. But what we do as planner, how we save your life and make your life easier is that we really do help you bring your event to, to for fruition. Because you, sometimes I'll reach a client, they may not know like, okay, so what are the rules for the vendors? How many hours do you need? 
how what time do you need your photographer to show up what time do you did you do your rsvp did it come up do you know when you're supposed to send that so people just think on the surface like oh, okay i'm just gonna do this okay you have your flowers do you know what temperature you have to be for the flowers to set up do you know the the settings of the place how many inches the chairs how many diameter you don't want your guests to come and have to pull the chair out and sit so the little details that you don't think about, that's what we do. We help put, truly put your event together to make it effortlessly. Because sometimes you might plan your event, but in the day of the moment, you can't be everywhere. You have to attend to your guests. You need somebody to be there at that moment to make sure that everything that you have is in place. Because you have the parents coming to you. You have, let's say if you're having a corporate event, you have dignitaries coming up. You have to know what type of food they like, where, where do they like to sit, what part of the room, where they are they arriving, transportation. And so there's so many moving pieces that people forget and they don't think about at that time. It's like something simple when you're having, let's say you're having a Christmas party at your house. It's just family and friends. It's an intimate, even it's a barbecue. Sometimes you fucking like, oh my God, I didn't get the plates. Oh, who got the fire lighter freeway? Who got the matches? Who have this? It's like little things that you don't focus on. That's the benefit of having a planner because we truly think about every details before you even have a question, we already have the answer. And as I said, one of the most important thing that we do, we put our fires. Like sometimes there will be 10,000 things going wrong and we have a plan A, B, and C to truly accommodate all those things before you even know it's a problem. Like most of the time after my event, I'll go to a client like, hey, just wanna let you know this, this, this happened, but we took care of it. But like, when? What did that happen? I didn't see that. But that's the benefit of truly having the right vendors because if you hire the right vendors for your events, whether, like I said, whether it's a wedding, a milestone, it helps you put on a show. You don't want your guests to come in and you hire the wrong DJ and the music sucks or hire the wrong food. You pay for this lavish event and the food tastes horrible and people are complaining or you come in, there's no parking for your guests or the room is not set up right. So those little things, that's what we truly do to help you make your life easier. Oh, absolutely. And I'm overwhelmed just hearing that. There's so many pieces. Absolutely. There's definitely a big ROI in getting someone to be able to organize and connect those dots for people. And um, I'm grateful for you sharing and the work you do. Where is it that you're based again? I think I missed Philadelphia. Where? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Okay, cool. So putting that down for um for us to later connect because you know you just never know again um who needs what where and we all are entrepreneurs here as well and uh we might be looking for people that are in the event space and um able to connect and and collaborate further so thank you so much for what you do and sh for coming today and sharing uh, what you just did thank you all right i'd love to say hi to don scott next hi don hi guys how are you Good. Welcome, Dawn. Um, love to hear a little bit um, around the work that you also are doing out there. In the world. Absolutely. So I am based in Charlotte. Um, I am a CPA. So I, <laughs> I realized what like persona this comes with. So 10 years ago, I looked around at my very traditional CPA background and I love the work. Like Linda said, it comes easy to me. Um, but I didn't really like the process that is what we think of when we think of an interaction with the CPA. It felt very cold and very not relationship based, very transactional. And everyone looked the same. I kind of fall outside of the lines on that a little bit. And it just was a very um, forced interaction. And so I set out to start a practice that was relationship based and it was very um, welcoming and very educational so that when we have a relationship and we do things, you know why we're doing what we're doing and you feel comfortable doing what you're doing. And I joke a lot that we all go to the bar with our friends and they're like, well, I did this and I did this and well, maybe your person's doing this wrong. And, and through education and relationships, you'll know, you know, this is why we're doing what we're doing. You know, if this really fit me or if this was right for me, we would be doing this kind of thing. So I have built this beautiful practice based around passionate entrepreneurs, female founders are kind of my love language. 
Um, and we do everything from bookkeeping, accounting, tax planning, tax preparation, the whole kind of traditional um, landscape, but with kind of a warm hug, friendship, like let's have a, a cup of coffee kind of thing together. Um, you know, I think I could be the best CPA in the entire world. And if you're afraid of me, or if you don't want to talk to me, I'm not, I'm not going to be any of service to you. So really creating that safe place. And I took it a step further and I'm even getting all sorts of new credentials in financial therapy because there is so much that goes along with money and feelings and our backgrounds and everybody has a reason that they do what they do. And so if you can identify and respect why you do what we do, we can make a plan that works for you and your plan may be different than your plan. And, but at the end of the day, we all need to, you know, get from A to Z. And if our money is not right and our, our books are a mess and we haven't done our taxes in five years, it doesn't matter how passionate we are about our business. It's probably not going to work. So, um, I'm super proud of that. And then during COVID, I realized just to further that whole chaos, there was so much bad information and it was swirling. It was everywhere and it was fast and and I couldn't find a way to get good information to people in a quick manner. And so um, as part of my commitment to do one thing a year that scares me, um, I started a podcast in 2022. And so um, the podcast is a really a celebration of all these amazing people that I'm blessed to have in my life. And we generally talk about other people because accounting is only so cool. Um, and we celebrate their accomplishments and what they're passionate about every once in a while. I sprinkle in, you know, some accounting and tax stuff. Um, but it's, it's really amazing. And, um, and then I'm also part owner of a blow dry bar, which really rounds me out as a whole person. Um, and we are in the process of franchising that. So, all right, Don, I love yeah. it. I like, thank you so much for sharing that. I love specifically the value that you put um, also towards the human relationships and making sure that you've also seen that gap with the financial therapy. I like that's very smart, mm -hmm. right? The alignment between now the numbers, knowing your numbers, more of the strategies, more of the tactics, the things that are so like cold, so to speak. And then some Very. of the, the mindset, the trauma, the things that mm -hmm. most of us are blocking us from our success and also understanding how to make informed decisions with money because we might have some of the personal stuff happening, which might get in the way. So that would be my brilliant, I think it's a brilliant question for you. How do you, what can you share around the work that you've done and the experience that you've gathered over the years that you've been practicing what you do? Um, how, what are some of the things that get in people's way around the alignment of the the money part, meaning the education behind the work, you know, the money piece, and then the financial therapy piece, like some of the personal stuff that shows up. What are some of the things that you could share with us? No, like, so that's a good, that's a, both of them. yeah, that's a great question. So what I find is when we become entrepreneurs, the gap between our personal life and our professional life really becomes very small. So our our relationship with our family is directly related to our relationship with our work because a lot of times we never turn off either of those parts of our heart or soul or mind, or it's just everything becomes one. And so what I've seen a lot of is we all go into these things with starry eyes and we're like, it's going to be great because I'm super good at what I do. And there's that, that can take you really far. And a lot of times it does take you very far, but when we start adding partners, business partners, romantic partners, you know, all of those things, that's when things start to get a little bit, um, trickier to navigate. And so if you can be honest with yourself, which is honestly sometimes the hardest part and identify this is what I need. This is what I need. And a lot of times I, I always advise my clients who are going into business together to sit down and have like a prenup talk with your partner. Like I, a lot of times I'll ask them, what's the goal? And they're like, I want to make it a lot of money. And, and so my next question to them is always, well, what's a lot of money to you? Because a lot of money to me is probably a very different number than a lot of people. So identifying that, really being strategic and making sure you're in alignment or, hey, we can't make payroll this week. To me, that would mean that I don't take my payroll. But to you, that may mean I, I have to take my payroll. I have a mortgage to pay kind of thing. Um, so just identifying the things that trigger you. We all have that thing that triggers us. So being honest about the triggers and being honest about our relationship with money and 
how we want to present ourselves to the world. Because I had a really weird thing at the blow dry bar where I, in my mind, present myself in a way and I'm perceived in a different way. And it was a really funny moment where I realized that the experiences that I'd had that made my vision in my head of myself are very different than like an outward person's um, perception of me. And so really being able to have a conversation about that whole self and the whole goal and the whole everything is, is going to help. It's not going to eliminate all your issues by any means, but a respectful, open, honest conversation is, it's never a bad way to start. Yeah, I love that you started with that and uh, you touched upon partnerships because that definitely is like its own topic in life and business and yeah. especially in business is almost like, you know, um, you know, like a life partnership. So choosing wisely is very important and also being clear and understanding mm -hmm. the purpose behind who is it that you're looking for and how you complement one another and all of those things mm -hmm. um, are really important. How did you get into this work, Don? Um, I changed my major five times in college, so it took me a hot second. Um, I was a collegiate athlete. I was a D1 athlete, and um, I mentioned to my athletic advisor that I would like to take business, and um, it meant I had to take accounting one and two. Everyone had to do it, and I'm sitting in there and watching people fail out left and right, and I'm like, what, what is happening? This isn't, I mean, it's hard, but it's not like impossible, and I kind of had a moment where I was like, okay, like if this is so hard for everybody else and it's not like impossible, maybe this is where I go. And so I actually had to um, essentially lobby my university to allow me to take accounting classes because where I attended university, they uh, they didn't really encourage um, accounting to athletes. So um, it just kind of clicked in and, and here we are all these couple of years later. <laughs> How was how was the gap between what you've learned in school and now practicing out, this out in the real world been for you? Huge. How has the transition been? It's um, it's a totally different. Well, so I I find that accounting is very broad, right? We have a lot of different um, options, um, and I've done everything from high net worth, where I'm buying airplanes and all sorts of crazy things, to you know, how am I going to pay my rent or put food on the table for some of my clients and. And what I found was in the higher corporate type things, I'm a plug and play person, right? And so like, I'm doing these crazy, amazing things, but if I leave, they just put someone else in. Whereas if I, if I go to a more personal relationship base, I'm a part of someone's life and they're a part of my life. And, and so I really kind of let go of a lot of my very, very like least technical accounting revenue prep things um, to really focus on the things that help the people that I truly care about. And so for me, a lot of my schooling is foundational, but not something that I use um, yeah. every day, which I like. <laughs> I ask that intentionally because I think it's a common experience between also my personal journey that, you know, through the school of life, through real experience, you get to learn what are the things that matter to you. You know, information, knowledge is great, but then the application of it really teaches you a lot about yourself and who you want to work with and what niche and angle are you the best at and where can you add the most value and all of that and then you kind of figure out a way to stay there and then eventually develop yourself and and, and grow and and be able to be of service towards more people so yeah Absolutely. thanks so much for sharing and thank you for all the amazing work that you're doing out there as well yes I, I really don't feel that us as entrepreneurs give us, uh, ourselves enough credit or we get enough recognition for the work that we do. So it's very important to me also through here at the Life School to be able to ensure that people are seen and heard for the work that they're doing um, because we work so hard, right? We work so hard and we're so smart every day. And I think it's important to hear that what we do has value and it's really in service towards others. Those reminders at least help me and feed me and my soul and the work that I do and the mission and the purpose behind what we do. So um, yeah, I think it's amazing based on kind of what I've heard thus far and all the amazing entrepreneurs that have been blessed to, to kind of unite together through roundtables, conferences and events. And it's amazing that uh, we're, we're persistent, we're agile, we are consistent, all the things that are important to be able to drive the, the things that matter to us for, forward and the meaningful work that we believe in. So kudos to everyone and thank you again for everything that you've shared thus far.
But we have three more amazing purpose-driven entrepreneurs uh, left to hear from. So I'd love to go to Jasmine Rice next. Hello, um, I'm Jasmine Rice. I'm based in Maryland, halfway between DC and Baltimore. Um, I own Strategic Insight Financial Solutions. Um, so Don might could, she might understand the most about this because she's she does, she has an account, a CPA business, but I offer virtual CFO services. Um, I like to think of myself as the business owner's accountability partner and business coach or finance coach, um, because like um, Don was saying, she partners with her clients, um, and that's kind of how I approach service of my clients. It's a partnership in understanding what they truly want. Um, with their goals for their business, whether it's personal, professional, um, and then helping them turn those goals into profitability and growing and, um, excuse me, growing their business and making sure they have the cash flow to support the growth of that business. So that's one of the things um, some of my clients have come to me currently, because I currently do bookkeeping, I'm pivoting to do CFO services and all of my clients, when they came to me on the discovery call, they all had some pain points. And that's kind of how I was like, I've, I feel like I identify better with doing the strategic work with virtual CFO versus just doing the bookkeeping. Um, and I kind of do that in when I'm when I'm work as I'm working full time. I I see the the issue and I'm my my mind instantly goes to how can I solve this problem versus just chugging each month looking at the past performance doing bookkeeping. It's like I like looking forward and start and figuring out how to solve that problem. Yeah, well, welcome to the partnership. I'm pretty much a fractional CEO in HR for lots of the bigger companies. So I think the work that you do is absolutely so important and really in line with what Don talked about as well. But you have a different way that you're able to service and help. What are some of the some of the fundamental, maybe some of the problems that you've seen in your work, Jasmine, um, that show up on an, you know, on and off they repeat mm -hmm. patterns and then some solutions based on kind of your experience and your unique methodology and how you help companies? Um, so I'll start with the unique methodology. So for my CFO clients, it's a simple, repeatable process we do each month of look at your performance from the previous month and see how, well, let me back up. So when we first start working together, we set the targets for the first, for that year. And then each month we take your tar your performance and see how you're performing towards those targets and then see um, if you're on target to meet your goals for the end of the year, and if you are, of course, you don't need to change much, but if you're not on target to meet those goals, what do we need to do to adjust some type of way to meet those goals? Um, and basically using KPIs or key performance indicators to assess that um, performance for your business. Um, and it's a more simplified way because most business owners, they have something I want to work on is I keep thinking of one of my, my current clients. He is trying to kind of remove himself and delegate more is how can he do that, but also meet his goal. So it's trial, a lot of trial and error, basically of sitting down with him each month and trying to find a way to pivot to meet that goal. Yeah, no, that's very important to keep everybody focused, especially as, as you know, the company grows or wherever people are from solopreneur all the way to entrepreneur to CEO phase. It's important to understand that all the all the actions, all the SOPs, all the things that we're, all the operations that we talked about thus far are really aligning towards a specific outcome as well, because that's really working smart, because then mm -hmm. obviously we're uh, wasting resources and time, which is really so important. Uh, for anyone that is building a company. Jasmine, what's the purpose behind the work you do? How did you get here? So like Dawn, when I was in college, I did accounting. I never wanted to be CPA. So my hat's off to you, Dawn, because that was never a goal of mine. Um, taking a test to get a job was just, no, I could I just can fathom it. Um, and I knew the government was job security, if you will. Um, so that's kind of the path I went after college. And when I came back from attorney leave in 2019, I realized, no, when I came back from turning leave 2020, sorry, I realized I can't work for someone else until I'm retirement age. Um, so I kept thinking, what can I do to get me to that goal? So I knew I loved doing accounting and I didn't want to do it for a government anymore. So I came across, I, I went through a couple of iterations. I settled on bookkeeping. And then last year I realized bookkeeping is not where I feel like my zone of genius is. And then I, that's kind of the what led me to pivot to do virtual CFOs because it's my zone of genius is where I thrive at in multiple places in my life. So I was like, why not monetize it? 
Yeah, there you go. Just slowly connecting those dots. I always say that nothing is ever wasted in our experience, right? And sometimes the little rocks are like building blocks towards the next thing that we want to do. And whatever we're doing now is probably a building block to whatever else that we're trying to create in our in our future and the vision that we all have. So thank you also for sharing and coming today. And um, yeah, it's an honor to have all of you here. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, I'd love to go to Shakira Ralford next. Hi, Shakira. Hey, ladies. I think before I start, because I'm a very animated person, so before we start cracking up, I want to say that I find it <laughs> hilarious how we're all doing the same thing, but just saying it in very unique ways. <laughs> I don't know if anyone caught that, but I think about the third person, I was like, are we literally all just doing the same thing except we are just you know, streamlining it into one, one area. Don't tell that me is... it's accounting and numbers, the synergy. I am not, <laughs> honey, but I work with nonprofits. So I see budgets okay. as, a, as a living. I write grants. I do all the, I do all the things. So that's why I was like, Jasmine, Dawn, I need your help because I got at least 20 people on my back end. That's like, can you do? No, I'm not doing that. So I'm like, let's network. Let's connect. All right. So what, who am I? Right. So my name is Shakira Relaford. That's my government name. Essentially. I like to call myself the nonprofit lady or the disruptor, if you will, and a disruptor in a positive way. Right. I'm a Jack of all trades, master of most. I have a thousand different businesses, but like Bridget said, we got to put that in the op uh, operations zone. Right. So I work on every business. If you think for about 45 minutes to an hour every day, that takes up my <laughs> eight hour work week. So my day job is an associate professor. Uh, shout out to the professors out here. Um, so I'm in psychology and interpersonal communications. It's my main subject that I teach. And then I actually am an executive director of my own nonprofit that I started up right as the pandemic started. Very, very smart on my end, right? And so started a nonprofit. And then I also am a senior living advisor. And so I'm, you know, helping seniors come out of their home and transition with care, of course, into either short-term or long-term, you know, memory care places. Love the seniors. Um, my background, shout out to Dr. Ann, uh, is in behavior analysis. I am a former behavior analyst. I was working for the government, for the CDC. That was fun. And we were doing a lot of different things. I'm all about disseminating the science, if you will, right? Like, how do we make this make sense in other areas? Now, up to this point, I've spent 12 years in the autism world. And because that's in, in the ABA side of, of, of life, it's either autism or nothing else. I mean, really. And so I kind of wanted to get out of insurance and wanted to be somewhere where a person like me, especially a woman of color, can actually thrive. And I wasn't thriving. And so I let the I let my credentials go. I let it all go. I still obviously carry the science and into my business practices, but I I wanted to be more influential in in the in the space. And so as far as the industry sake. And so what happened is legit in 2020, I uh started my nonprofit. And I was so excited to share the, the good news with everybody. Like Dawn, I was, I had five, five, went through five majors in college before I settled because it was getting to the point where it was like, you're about to become a professional student. Get out, you know, at this point, the student loans are racking up. I don't have that kind of money. So I was like, let me just settle right on something. Went back. I knew what I wanted to do for my master's, which is why I became a behavior analyst. So anywho, we fast forward now 16 years and it's 2020 and I started the nonprofit and I was so excited. I was like, look at what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. No one cared. All they wanted to know was, how did you do it? And I was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't think that was important to know. People ate it up. And until this day, I do work with uh, nonprofit founders 97% of the time, small business owners, right? Or more visionaries, the other 3%. And so what is my job? My job, if you will, is to be a professional problem solver, or at least teach other founders and visionaries how to actually be a professional problem solver. So they can tap into their actual God-given purpose and divine connection on where they need to be. How do I do it though? Well, by the time people get to me, if you noticed in my intro, I've said I had like 17 different jobs, essentially. I wear 17 different hats. And so when it came to 
all those avenues, the most common denominator was although they may reach out to me because they want a grant written or they reach out to me because they want to help them with the sustainability of their nonprofit or they want to be able to tap into corporate you know, sponsorships because I have a background in PR as well. Trust me, the pandemic was an opportunity to literally explore all my interests, right? I became a, yoga, a registered yoga instructor. Honey, I uh, took all these certifications. We have nothing else to do, right? <laughs> Netflix got boring real fast. So I was like, cool. Pursued coaching the whole nine. I hated coaching. So I was like, listen, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. But at this point, you know, God had other plans. So anyway, I'm you know, I, the most common denominator I saw was that everyone who I worked with or was attracting, if you will, struggled with mental health diagnoses or, or barriers that prevented them from actually moving forward in what they needed to do. So they had a vision, they saw the vision, they could see the end result, but didn't know how to get there. Or they knew how to get there, but was too scared to actually implement and jump, jump the broom, if you will, and be committed to the call. And I was like, this is funny. Like, not funny, but like, wow, is this where my life is about to go? So even with my own mental health struggles, right, because I have OCD and ADHD, I was like, everyone has intrusive thoughts. I thought it was me. You know how when you deal with something, like when, if you're going through depression or experience depression, you think you're the only one. Although you know that's not true, but it's like in that moment, you feel like everything is... And so that's what I was thinking, like, oh, my God, I'm not the only one that thinks this way. or I'm not the only one that has experienced that. And I was able to use that, obviously, to leverage um, or not leverage, but just help other people get to where they needed to be. And so I said, enough is enough at this point. It's, it's time out for everyone putting their dreams on hold. I'm done with that. I've done it up to this point. We, we can't do that. One thing I noticed is that there's so much unresolved trauma that we like, and I know Dr. Ann talked about this. There's so much unresolved trauma that we, we, we literally are holding on into our bodies. And when we can't make sense of that stuff, what our brains tend to do is fill in information, fill in the gaps with things that don't make sense. So we create these narratives that are not based on reality. And we all do it. And it doesn't mean that something's wrong. It just means that when so we don't understand something or we can't figure it out, we just come up with things to make to justify if you will why we need to go and where we need to be and what we need to be doing and it's completely opposite and detours us from where we actually need to be going and what we need to be doing and so I'm sitting here listening to everybody today I'm fast I'm getting there I'm sitting here listening to everybody today and I was like look at us disrupting those negative patterns helping to helping other people solve those problems if you will that they can't seem to figure out and so Yes, we have some in the financial area. We have some in resiliency. We have others in branding and marketing and, and, and human development, right? And, and so I, I, I like it because I get to be in the nonprofit space and literally do the same thing. That just only means that everybody, human being, are all <laughs> experiencing the same loop and they don't know how to get out of that cycle. And we have an opportunity to really transform. And I think it's powerful. So I like to break down the, the process. I know I'm just going and going. I'm trying to get all the, <laughs> but I, I like to break down the process is this. When they come to me and they're like, okay, I need a grant written or okay, I need all these other things done. I'm like, great, let's, let's, let's chit chat because what you can't do, right, is think you're going to hide <laughs> those things that you may not tell other people. It's going to show up. It's going to show up in your performance as a leader. It's going to show up in, in our budget when it comes down to talking about money. It's going to show up when it when it's time to execute. Hey, I need you to go sit down and talk to the the you know the the team with Google so that way you can get a grant or get you, you know awarded. Oh my God, no. <laughs> what? So it shows up when it's time to develop a board. Mm -mm, I don't trust people. Seriously? So it's one of those things where I was like, enough is enough. We got to get out of survival. We got to get out of the left brain, tap into the right brain <laughs> so we can actually have abundant lives. We can actually thrive. You don't have to be in survival mode your whole life. That's going to get you nowhere. And so I got tired of seeing that. I got tired of facing that all the time, but I love it. I love it because I lives get to be changed. People's visions for their life and their business get to actually flourish. And that's the most rewarding thing. So yeah, I might be able to do 99 different things, honey. I got you. Trust me. 
Okay. We're all following each other on LinkedIn now. So just hit me up. However, although I get to do all these different things, the, the bottom line is at the end of the day, you got to get to the vision. You got to get to what you see the end result is. And I'm just here to hold your link arms with you to help you get to the finish line. Oh, Shakira, talk about life experience. Ooh, I love your energy, <laughs> by the way. And uh, Thank you. you talk, about, talk about, you know, awareness, uh, education and application, right? All the different skills that you probably mm -hmm. have over the years that you just mentioned. And I didn't need to ask you the question, uh, which I think comes up for a lot of the people in our audience, meaning how do I align my for-profit company with some of the non-profit? But you kind of touched upon that, that a lot of the personal stuff, inner work, trauma, all those things that hold us back are getting in the way from even when we have the education and the strategies to be able to do so mm -hmm. in implementation so that mm -hmm. we actually align that with our vision. So I love the work you do. I have one last question for you mm -hmm. around mind management. How, I mean, you said you're a master at many things. Of course you have, because <laughs> you've obviously applied all these things. What can you, how do you manage your time? What are some two, three, four things or maybe fundamental things that you've kind of mastered that help you uh, to be in so many companies and doing so many things? Well, Do you have I would more say than 24 it's... hours a day? <laughs> I just, no, I don't. I sleep a lot of time. Trust me, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I think in the beginning, I was like trying to do everything. And then my family got neglected because I'm also a pastor's wife. I have a daughter. I have other things. Like I, I am everywhere. You see what I mean? So I decided I hate work. I do. Right. Like I, I, I don't like to work. I'm work smarter, not harder type of girl. And so everything that I do, I do it because I actually enjoy it. Job satisfaction would trump any amount of money any day. Period. Jasmine was like, look, I don't work for nobody. I can't, can't do it. So in, 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 even in that example, we're all here as an entrepreneur because we've gotten to that place where we can't work with folks. We love them, but we can't, we can't be a, some, a, 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 under somebody's vision, right? Does that make sense? I'll help you achieve your vision, but I can't work up under your vision. And so I had to sit down and say, you know what, Shakira, what do you actually what what is something you'll be willing to do every day for free if if it if 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 it meant nothing? And literally everything, everything I've I listed off was like, I, I would be willing to do all of this for free. Why not? Why not? It, it ain't about me at the end of the day. So I, I get up, my day starts usually like 5 36 in the morning, you know, e easy peasy. Um, I have a hard stop, hard stop, 3 30. Cause that's when my talk, my daughter is usually home from school by that point, three 30. So I say, okay, I sit down and I, and I'm, I have to write everything down and program it in the schedule and put it on Asana and put it on Google. Like I I'm, I'm OCD in that way. Like I have to <laughs> alarm, I have an alarm for everything. Okay. To remind me to eat, remind me to go to the bathroom, take a shower, all the things. But I sit down and I say, okay, I'm only giving myself one hour, 45 minutes max, but one hour. So for the nonprofit, what all do I need to get done today? Okay. I am, I love to delegate. I ain't scared to trust nobody. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'll, look, I'll delegate. Hey, do you, okay. I'll, I'll delegate in a heartbeat, but you got to get to the point where you're like, listen, my ideal work day is this, right? I'm teaching, I'm a professor, full-time professor. I love that more than anything. So I'm going to continue to work my nine to five. Cause I love my nine to five. I love what I do. I love creating change agents. And we all know what Gen Z and, and, and every other person up under them look like right now. I, I got to teach them how to be critical. I got to get them in the classroom first before they get out in the workforce so I can continue to grow and develop them. But as I shift, I look at my other folks who have been out the workforce, my, my, my 35, 40, 55 plus folks, okay? And I say, okay, life ain't over for you. Hey, here's how we can get this work done day in five hours a week. Let's, 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 let's stop tapping into the traumatic experiences of, I got to trade all my time for money. No, you don't. That's a lie. That's a lie identity we've been taught to adopt, but that ain't actual truth. Does that make sense? So I always tell all my clients that one nugget, other people's perceptions of you is not your reality. Period. Point to the blank. Remember how I said earlier, people, people fill in the gaps and create these frameworks and narratives that ain't based on reality. Their framework is not your reality. 
you ain't gotta work seven hours a day if you don't want to. I do because I like what I do. And I always take two hours. I took an extra hour for myself. Literally, if I just sit down on the couch and like spread out naked, whatever I got to do, I got to do what I got to do. It's self-care. Do you understand? <laughs> you, know, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm serious, right? I put my, keep my phone on. Do not disturb because I don't like to talk to people. I hate talking on the phone for real. I, I like talking obviously, but I hate talking on the phone. I like this. Let's do zoom. We could, you can text me, send me an audio message. No problemo, but I'm not going to sit on the phone with you all day. I got things to do. Honey, I'm moving and grooving. And so when you enjoy what you do, it's never work. And you can manage your time easy because you're the boss. You know what I mean? If you train up your team, if you get a team, even if you're uh, uh, yourself, pretend, pretend like you are your own employee. Train you up so you know everything is always going to be in smooth motion. And when things get a little crooked and sideways, you know how to go in and fix it right away. And it's never a burnout moment. It's never an exhaustion it's never a, I want to give up and I'm tired. No, 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 no. So <laughs> that's how I, I break it up. I love for you to keep going, but I think you share so many amazing nuggets there. And I mm -hmm. think, I mean, yeah, food for thought, right? Talk about, you know, your own definition of all these different things and being aware around where is it that we have actually picked up all these things and your own definition of self-care and the fact that you actually are very agenda driven and also, you mm -hmm. know, you that works for me as well. So I think, yeah, I think uh, all those things that you share, we're definitely will follow each other on LinkedIn. That's yes. our, our next steps to be able to further connect with one another and then, you know, consume each other's content and then find ways to further connect will absolutely be amazing. Thank you so much, Shakira, for what you shared. No and problem. all the amazing service Thank that you're you. also educating uh, people through you being a professor and sharing all these amazing things that you've learned in your journey as well. Mm -hmm. All right. I would love to go to my last but not least speaker for the day, Jesse uh, Zaila. Zaila? Did Zaila, I say but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Daisy. I I doesn't know. People call me that. Um, hello, everybody. I don't, if I can bring just half the amount of energy that Shakira just brought, I mean, I'll be winning all day long. Okay. So <laughs> my name is Jesse uh, and I don't do anything even remotely similar to what everybody else does here. <laughs> That's okay. I am the CEO and co-founder of Twerk. And uh, before I get into what that is, um, the background really is that when I was growing up, my dad had his own business and he lost it and lost everything along with it. And we really struggled um, for a very, very long time. And I promised myself that I would never, ever have my own business. <laughs> that was the last thing that I wanted. So I ended up choosing a very stable, but ultimately unfulfilling career as an attorney. And I've tried to get out of that for the last 13 years. A few months ago, I was, so I, I live in Southern California. And a few months ago, I was in Northern California for an artist residency. <laughs> um, I create artwork of um, people that I love. And I also do abstracts. And anyway, here I was in this artist residency, the first one that I've ever been a part of, and I was billing 200 hours a month. Now, if you're billing 200 hours a month as an attorney, you're working a lot more than that. And I just, I fell into this deep depression because I was trying to find a job that wasn't an attorney job. And I have transferable skills. I can do all kinds of things other than being an attorney with some of the things that I've done in the past. And, um, so I was trying, trying, trying and using all these job search sites or these job matching sites and either they, you know, even like automated stuff, it would look at my resume and say, here are attorney's jobs. And I'm like, I'm trying to get out of being an attorney or it would say, Hey, you should do this very entry level position, like a pizza chef. I'm like, what in the world makes you think that I should be a pizza chef? That was literally a match that I got. So I was really depressed, really depressed because I've been trying to get out of this. It's a soul sucking endeavor for me. And I wished I could just like pick up my phone and talk to it and say, stop sending me attorney jobs. I should be a director of operations or something that is definitely transferable. I've led teams. I was a managing partner at a law firm and I've done all kinds of stuff. And I came up with this idea two years ago that if Tinder and Indeed had a baby and basically job search, 
uh, matches would come to you on a single screen, easily digestible. You would swipe left to reject it and you would sw swipe right to automatically apply with a curated cover letter and resume. But my business partner at the time, he dropped out because he got like a $400,000 a year job. Okay. Like I can't blame the guy, like go ahead, you know, go with your bad self and take that job. So I was really pissed. And I told my husband, I was like, why hasn't somebody come up with my idea yet? Why hasn't somebody done that? And he said, well, you should do it. And I was like, I can't do it. I don't have any connections. And he's like, what are you talking about? You know, this person, this person, this person. And so I thought maybe I'll do that. And um, it turns out that, you know, I'm not alone in wanting to pivot that Forbes recently came out with a stat that uh, this year, it was in April that like over 50%, it's like something like 57% of people in the workforce are trying to pivot and um, current job matching sites are not cutting it. Um, so keywords and filters, keywords and filters, keywords and filters. It's so annoying because it does not help you with what you need to do. Well, now that we have tools for AI, um, the time is now and we can, we can do that. And so we are developing an app right now where not only are you swiping, so it's like Tinder and Indeed had a baby and a lots of places have said that they've done this, but they've not actually successfully pulled it off. And you can talk to the thing and tell it exactly what you're wanting to do and exactly what you're not wanting to do. And, um, and it will learn. And if it needs more information, it will talk back to you. So I, um, that's what I do. That's what Twerk does. And um, I'm really excited. We're in the build phase. We are um, significantly through, well, through a significant portion of our proof of concept build. I'm looking for beta testers. Um, and um, yeah, that's, so that's, that's what, that's what we do. And, and it's, it's because I was really frustrated and really depressed. Um, and, and I did not want to run my own business, but here I am 16 investors later and here we go. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, Jesse. Your art is beautiful. We're all like, you know, admiring the background. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a great mix of skills and art and creative, right? And and the left and the right brain and all these amazing things. I think what you have is actually brilliant because that's exactly the gap that I also see in the market right now. We're all very skilled. We've gathered a lot of life experience. And just like Shakira said, some of us are going to take all those skills and put them to use towards others. But there's gonna come a time we're gonna need talent, right? Meaning that I can now use my skill to be able to help somebody else. And I don't think that anything exists where it matches skills, right? No. When I have certain skills and I'm matched with a position or an entrepreneur or a company or a business that actually is looking for those skills. So I just gave you something from my experience as well, which I think is really amazing back to what you're doing with your app and, and the mission behind the work that you have, but also believing in, in that vocation, right? Because yes, when it comes to anything, it will take time, energy, money, and all those resources. But if it's something that is innovative in the market, that's why we're entrepreneurs and problem solvers, right? Because we always are bringing in such a unique perspective um, to the, the work that we do as well. So yeah, kudos to you. And thank you so much for being here and sharing what you just did as well. Thanks. All right. I would love to finally, I mean, I don't want the, these events to end because uh, it's crazy how we will spend an hour and a half almost together, but it feels like I'm just energized because there's so much learning and growing that we're doing and connecting heart to heart, which is kind of, you know, what I also love to do and put together in spaces where things are not transactional and it's not like, okay, buy my thing. Here's my thing, right? We can get a, we get a lot of overload of that but just really hard to hard conversations and connections. And the only way to get to know one another, at least get the conversation started, is to kind of just add value with what we're doing, right? So I, I've received golden nuggets for each one of you. So I really thank all of you for sharing what you just did. I'd like to go back now to wrap up the event with Orly. So Orly, my question for you and everybody, a final question is, what is your vision for what you're trying to build in the future? And also where is it that the audience can further connect with you today? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, it's interesting because before I started writing my second book, I would have thought, um, you know, it's really about building programs and online courses and workshops. Um, and I'm still planning on doing that. But writing my second book where I have inter will have interviewed 40 female entrepreneurs about their stories 
has literally like lit a fire for me in terms of elevating those voices and seeing more women uh, recognized and also um, just um, sharing these stories. And so I've started to um, build a following on LinkedIn around the takeaways and the research that I'm doing. And every week, let's see, so twice a month, I post a, a poll and twice a month, I post a takeaway from one of my interviews or research that I've done. I did one just about how, you know, this lack of a belief in yourself, which is something that I have heard from every woman I've interviewed. And um, I just, I would say that what I see is becoming, um, um, I guess, an international speaker on a female, um, female founders and how they're different and how they need different support. And, you know, there are currently 1.2 million female owned businesses in the US alone. And yet they are being funded at a much, much lower rate than men. Um, they can't get bank loans. I mean, all kinds of things I am learning. So I've become rather passionate about this. Um, and so I think, yeah, for me, the future is really um, maybe building a course for women entrepreneurs uh, and creating some kind of a pathway where more women can become successful. Wow, beautiful mission and impact for sure. Orly, I know we're all connected here on LinkedIn, but is there any maybe website where you have free resources for our audience that you'd like to send people to? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can go to my website, ziwebrands.com, and um, you can check out. I have a press page, and now I have a book page that has my first book, Ready Launch Brand, and then talks about my second book and encouraging people to uh, join my VIP list so they can be the first to learn about what's happening with the new book. Uh, so that's where I would send people. And of course, LinkedIn. I mean, yeah, we can all connect there. I would love to do that with all of you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Rolly. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'd love to go to Hepsi next. Same question for you, Hepsi. Hi, so uh, my vision is to support successful women to not only make a better business and be a better leader and live a better lives for themselves, but also to acknowledge the fact that they need to do that for future generations that are coming up behind them, because if we don't change the way that we uh, behave just because we've done it in business doesn't mean that it's the right way now, there will continue to be a huge gap between ourselves and the next generation and I just want to uh, be kind of just a couple of uh, footsteps down the path um, and showing the way for these other other women that feel stuck even though that they are deemed to be successful in society's eyes. Okay, beautiful. Where is it that do you have any free resources for our audience that you like to send people to? Uh, yeah, so on my website is hepsigodin.com and I have a freebie, which is uh, the 12 ways to make your business better, looking at where you are and your masculine and feminine rhythm. Perfect. And just to let everybody know that I'm going to tag everyone wherever this event is going to be featured so that all the links will be there and it'll be easy access to everybody. Thank you so much, Hepsi. I'd love to go to Thank Dr. Ann next. Uh, yes, I was just about to put my website in the chat and, um, I, uh, yeah, I blanked. <laughs> I'm just really excited to have been here with you all. Um, I didn't quite exactly know what this was going to be. So, um, I, I do also, I do really a lot around schools and leadership is a big piece of what I do. Um, and, uh, just resilience in general. So, I shared my um, my website. I have my book. I actually have two books. I have a chapter in another book, and another book is going to be coming out shortly. Compilation on um, uh, just a lot of women empowerment, and uh, I have podcasts and media highlights and stuff like that. And um, I have some free things as well on my website. Uh, still working on a lot, just because. I've been I've been um, working for those dollars, trading my time for dollars, and so I'm slowly transitioning, and it's been a challenge, but I'm I'm getting there. So anyway, thanks for okay. being here, or thanks for having me. 
Thank you so much for sharing that as well. I'd love to go to Bridget next. So yeah, the question is just your vision for impact and, and that you're trying to create in the future. Impacting the lives of as many um, entrepreneurs who want the freedom and doing business and life on their terms as possible. And the freebie is my book, Stuck on Ready, plus shipping, free plus shipping. Let's be real about that. And uh, it's just stuckonready.com. Okay, very nice. Thanks so much, Bridget. Linda. Yes, for me, um, I started doing master classes, um, helping you know single moms or anybody that want to have start a career in the event business to help them, teaching them the right skills, how to start your business and how to deal with the struggle. Because my business, um, as we briefly know, pandemic hit our industry really hard. The war shut down; we couldn't do anything. How to transition yourself in chaos and how to scale your business so those are the things that I'm doing my vision initially is to have a venue space where it can make it a one stop for people who wants to have a venue or have a business or don't know where to put events or where to go to kind of help people like bridge the gaps breaching everything and bring a lot of vendors together to be able to help people reach you know small businesses who try especially women um i usually most of my staff is 90 percent females they are college students they are single mom or relatively empower skill um anybody that i bring into my business i teach you the skill that you can move forward and even start your own business so those are something that my next that to really truly empower people to look at it more because when, sometimes when people think about events they just think about events but there's more to it how to put on these large scale events and how to do it correctly, just to educate and teach people all the things that they need to do. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, as of course, on um, Linda Gunda. Um, you can find me on all social media platform uh, from Instagram, Facebook, uh, my website is lindaevents.com. So you can find me on all platform. Um, but in this season, it's just to educate women. Um, and that's some of the reason why I'm serving on the board of NABO to truly build women businesses and help people accomplish the goals that they want to do. All right, beautiful vision. Thanks so much for sharing, Linda. And I'd love to go to Dawn next. So we have been working on kind of a bridge. Um, we've created a platform called the Empowered CPA, and it's really a resource for everyone from brand new business owners who may be constricted by funds to people who are restricted by emotional um, restraints, meaning maybe they're not prepared quite yet to talk to someone like me, um, and really offers a lot of digital courses, um, content, things that can really help get you started and get you on the right path, as well as take you all the way through what you need to do if that's the path you choose. It's by no way a feeder into my firm. In fact, I try to keep it to where it's completely separate from my firm. Um, and so we've been working on, um, we have a tax course right now to help kind of understand how taxes for solopreneurs work because there's so much out there and a lot of people are embarrassed to, to ask. So it really clarifies a lot of that. Um, and then we're going to start working on some small groups. Um, I know that a lot of female founders, especially get really lonely and money is not something we want to talk about freely generally. And so creating a safe place for that is kind of what we're working on putting out right now. So my website for that is theempoweredcpa.com and there's also um, the associated podcast as well. Okay, thank you so much, Dom. Jasmine. Um, so I don't have anything immediately in the, in the future right now, but I'm looking to just connect with more business owners and help them turn their, their goals into um, a profitable business. Um, but you can connect with me on LinkedIn as Jasmine Rice or my biz, business website, strategicinsightfinancial.com. Um, and then a, a goal in the future is to connect with um, high schoolers to do financial literacy. That's another passion of mine. That's beautiful. Thank you. Shakira. For me, my in, more immediate goal is um, to land a TEDx stage by 2026. You know me, as you could tell, I'm an animated person. So, but I do want to move, move forward into speaking more. So, um, and I have a few books. I have an anthology I just published. I have a second book coming out, um, centered around mental, <laughs> mental health and business, um, and, and more actionable steps. Like how can we overcome those, those challenges and barriers? 
if anyone's interested in grant writing or want to know how to make more extra money, then I have a grant writing course that kind of deals with that. I mean, I've I kind of been doing things here and there, but if anyone wants to find me, like find me, find me and connect is I'm on LinkedIn and, and Facebook as my name, Shakira, like the singer, Relaford, R-E-L-E-F-O-R-D. And then my podcast, Nonprofit Unplugged. Okay. Thank you so much, Shakira. And then Jesse. All righty. So um, my short term goal is to land a couple of in angel investors. I'll just put it right out there. That's what I'm trying to do. I just I just ended our friends and family round, which was really successful. And now it's time to to move it up. So as far as, um, you know, the, the twerk uh, mission and vision is concerned, our mission is to eliminate the soul suck of finding a job by making the process stress free. And our vision is to liberate job seekers worldwide one swipe at a time. All right. And Jesse, where is it that uh, the audience can further connect with you beyond LinkedIn? You Beyond LinkedIn, great question. I mean... If not, LinkedIn will be okay. I mean, LinkedIn's like, I'm most active on LinkedIn more than more than any other space. I'm, you know, unless you want my artwork, that's a different story. But, but yeah, LinkedIn, that's, that's, I'm, I'm most active with my business on LinkedIn. Well, how, how do we get access to your artwork? Is it for sale? Woo. Um, so these, these are actually, these are all originals that I just, they're all mine. <laughs> yeah. These are people I truly really love. Um, but it oddly, and on my LinkedIn, on one of my featured stories, you'll see this. I actually have a painting of Katanji Brown Jackson hanging in the chambers of the Supreme Court right now. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I have like a thank you letter from her and everything like on my mantle. It's the most amazing thing. It's like, how do you go up from there? You just can't. So <laughs> it's like done. You know? But, you know, if people want to commission, they can. But I, I um yeah, it's, it's, it's up to you, but you know, my, that's not my main business, <laughs> but I love it. I absolutely there you love go. It. ideas. We're all entrepreneurs. We're always thinking of new creative ways to be able to uh, create impact. So again, thank you all. I think everybody went, I would love for you to encourage, I would encourage you highly to connect with our speakers today because one of our values is connection. And this was just the beginning of a conversation. I hope that we all added value based on the work that we're doing. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the speakers that are joining us. I will see you with another event here at the Life School next time. Um, where amazing entrepreneurs all come around the around table so they can share their uh, message, impact, and service with the world. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you.